Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass., and from potentially your home as we are now doing this over webcam. We've got Yovan on Death and Taxes versus Dom on Cephalid Breakfast. That's right. The deck is spreading. We'll see if he can adjust his camera a little bit there. No, looks like this is the camera angle we'll have for this first round. It's his first time playing on camera, leading out with Misty Rainforest for a Tundra. Yovan opening up with a Mother of Runes. Brainstorm in response for Dom. Cephalid Breakfast, a combo deck first and foremost. Saving those brainstorms for when you have a shuffle can pay major dividends. We'll see how this works out for Dom in this first game. So far, those cantrips not pulling the maximum amount of weight. Brainstorm putting back two cards, drawing one of them, and then ponder, reseeing that card. May have been stuck on one mana. But now a Stoneforge Mystic grabbing a Batter Skull. And really, Umazawa's Jite is an absolute nightmare for Cephalid Breakfast. Oh, here's the Cephalid and the Nomad, and that's going to do it. So Cantrip's good enough actually assembling the combo on turn three. A very difficult to deal with proposition for Death and Taxes. They really need like a Swords to Plowshares. Um... As far as sequencing goes, you generally want to play your Nomad first, as if you've got your Cephalid down, and then you play your norm Nomad if they swords or remove somehow your creature on board. You want it to be your Enabler, not your Cephalid. You've got only four Cephalid Illusionists, and you want to keep those as safe as possible. There are times where you might sequence it differently. Uh, for example, if you expect days, in that instance, you may play your Cephalid first and then your one mana enabler after. If they've got the days, then they can counter it. But if you have another one in hand, it is probably worth risking getting the combo online a full turn earlier. Death and Taxes has a lot of tools to potentially interact with Cephalid Breakfast. Out of the sideboard, things like Containment Priest, perhaps Rest in Peace, can stop the kind of combo element of it to a degree. Of course, Thassa's Oracle, just such a good card that it can actually totally bypass the Graveyard Hate. If you do get the Thassa's Oracle in hand, you can put that out and then respond by milling yourself out of the game and uh, then let her trigger resolve. Not a whole lot can be done about that. All right, so Dom on a mull, facing down against that turn one Mother of Runes again. Mom not going to pull a ton of weight in this matchup as Death and Taxes usually needs to protect its creatures from removal. Cephalid Breakfast pretty much has a playset of swords to plowshares. Force of Will stopping this turn to... I'm not sure what Yovan played there. Might have been a Thalia. Might have been a Stoneforge Mystic, but that turn to play thwarted by Force of Will. Let me know if you can tell what that is in the comments. And Stoneforge Mystic now for Dom. Yeah, post-board Cephalid Breakfast does potentially have a play set of Swords to Plowshares. Mom might actually be best in terms of potentially blocking and preventing Umazawa's Jite from getting counters on it, as that card is an absolute nightmare. Jite, kind of an exact answer for breakfast. 
able to remove a counter due to minus one minus one the the whole combo revolves around a one one creature so very good at breaking up the play limb duels vault has found something we'll see what this ends up being dom may be ready to win on his next turn Yvonne, best be prepared. Caracas. Casting Stoneforge Mystic. Grabbing that Gite. So if Yovan gets an untap step, he's going to be in good shape. But that could be a really big if here during the upkeep. Rashad and Port taps down. Does Dom have the three mana necessary? No. Supposing Mother of Runes. Could be an issue when Mazao's Jite comes down. It's going to get equipped onto a mom. Kind of a complicated game state here. So you can get protection from white to play around swords. Giving pro white. Two counters going on the GTA. Oh no, I think that was actually, so we may have had a misplay there. So pro-white given after. Oh, and this is this is an instructive moment here. So we had a turn where Umazawa's Jite was thwarted by the opposing Mother of Runes. I believe that board state was such that the pro-white could have been given prior to blocks, making it unblockable. Once those counters get on there, Cephala Breakfast is going to have a much tougher time. And so that is a quick two games there for Breakfast. It's one of the strengths of the deck is people are not super familiar with how to play against it. It is not the most commonly played deck in the format, but it may be one of the better ones. That is all for this one, but don't worry. There is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.